Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tile Tuesday. I'm David Fatula, the Director of Technical Services for Island Stone. And we are live here today in our warehouse in Carlsbad, California. And I'm excited to be here. Um, you'll see in the background that we have our 100 wall board set that I just hung yesterday with my associate, David Tovar. And it's something that we are really excited about to uh, launch to the tile industry and to our customers is 100 wall board set with amazing labels on the back. And it'll be a great tool for us when we're doing these type of trainings. I can walk over and grab one of the boards and show you exactly um, what we're talking about. So I see a lot of you are on here already. Um, this is my second Instagram Live, and I'm excited to be here. Um, and I keep learning new stuff about doing this with the help of marketing. Today they've asked me to incorporate some photos. We'll see how that goes. Um, you may end up with a blank screen, but we'll, we'll figure it out together. So once again, um, welcome to all of you who are joining. Um, my name is David Fatula with Island Stone, and today we're going to talk about um, shower installations. And there's obviously a lot to cover there, and I certainly um, ask your questions as they come up. Um, and I will, uh, I'm going to talk about the products that we sell and how they can be incorporated into a shower installation. So, Island Stone, just before we get started really quickly, um, for those of you who are new to the company, we are a, a tile manufacturer. We've been in business since about 1997, and we're the company that brought the pebble to the tile industry, which is a, a, cool, um, a cool thing that we, we started um, that as a trend, and now, as you know, there are other companies that sell it as well, but none make it quite like we do. And one of the things that we're known for is that our interlock is almost seamless. I, I won't say it's seamless because occasionally there's one piece you might need to make an adjustment here or there. But generally speaking, you don't need to take the tile off the mesh like you do with many other pebble tiles and install them one at a time. And if you've been on any of the uh, and of the tile installation, tile installer chat rooms, you'll see that there's a lot of conversation about that. But with Island Stone Pebble, you do not need to do that. We, uh, we focus a lot on the making sure the interlock is really good so that when you set the sheets, which are mounted with mesh, that, uh, that you don't see that interlock. Um, so it's something that uh, we, we've focused on over the years. So um, Pebble Tiles, um, they, they're something that, you know, when we first started, um, those were products that were um, used regularly for shower floors. It's something if you've ever showered on a, in a uh, shower installation that has pebble on the floor, it's really nice underfoot. You know, anytime you walk on natural stone, and it's hard to kind of describe, but as a tile setter for many years, when we were talking to my customers about selecting product for their installations, they, um, we always talked about how natural stone has a certain feel and a certain aesthetic, which is hard to kind of describe, um, but it feels different than walking on a porcelain shower floor. So for a, uh, our pebbles, we have two basic types of pebbles. Um, we have a round top pebble, which we call perfect pebble, and we have a flat pebble called level pebble. And both are excellent choices for a shower floor. They have grout joints um, between the pieces, which allow the water to um, easily dissipate, which is really important in terms of slip resistance. If the tiles are too close together, it doesn't allow the, the water to spread across the floor and go to the drain. And that's, um, it's like having a tread on a tire, is how I describe it, is that if you have a really flat surface, it's easy to hydroplane. Like, for example, you put a 12 by 12 piece of marble on a shower floor, and your foot hits that, then it's, it has a potential to slide. But with a, a pebble tile, lots of good grout joints to, um, to allow the water to dissipate and go to the drain, prevent hydroplaning, and then also has a good dynamic coefficient of friction. So that's obviously the number that's important when we talk about um, how slippery a surface is, is that having a, a decoff of higher than 0.42 indicates that it, it's a safe walking surface. And technically speaking, that many people have used that 0.42 number for, um, to apply to every walking surface where they're going to put tile. Um, if you look, if you read the, the standard, it's actually specified for level interior walking surfaces expected to be walked upon when wet. 
So that wouldn't apply to a shower floor. We haven't done in the tile industry. We're still working on what that recommendation would be. But many people have used that number um, of higher than 0.42 to say that it's a, a safe walking surface regardless of where you're putting it. Some jurisdictions now have started to use 0.6 for pools and some exterior environments, and that's a number that they've come up with. But if you're following the industry standard, it's level interior walking surfaces. But we do know that if it's higher than 0.42, that it's generally going to be a safe walking surface. And what my, my feeling on this is that for shower floors in particular, you're barefoot. And so your foot is going to conform to the whatever the tile is you're walking on, and you're going to get a little bit of a, a, a better grip because the test is done with a, a flat piece of material, so it's not a foot. There's no way to duplicate the foot in testing at this time that I know of. So what I would say is that when we talk about a safe walking surface in the shower, you need to take all those things into consideration. Um, but we have tested a number of our pebbles, and they do test higher than 0.42. So um, just looking at some questions as they come across, what's the difference between round top pebble and level pebble? Well, as the name describes, perfect pebble or round top pebble has a rounded top, and level pebble is flat. So that's a little bit of an aesthetic and personal choice. Obviously, if you're putting it on a wall, then you don't really need to, um, it's not as much of a concern how it feels when you stand on it. But that's something, if you're working with a customer, they certainly should be aware of, is that if they're going to be standing on a round top pebble, it feels a little bit different than a level pebble. So wow, everybody, people keep joining. It's awesome to see uh, all of you here. Hi, Grateful Dave 77. Um, so once again, I'd just like to go back. Um, we're talking about uh, shower installations and Island Stone product used for shower installations. I'm David Fatula. I'm the Director of Technical Services for Island Stone. And in the background, you'll see, I'm really proud of this, so I'm going to keep showing it through the whole time, is our 100 wallboard set hung and ready to go. And so for those of you who just joined, this is the most exciting part of my presentation, is looking at all of those product hung on the wall and great selling tool. Um, really valuable to see everything up there on the wall. It's a, about an 8 by 15 board. It's grouted and on the back there's a label that has a ton of information. Basically everything you need uh, to sell a product. So for the showroom environment, you flip the board over on the back, it'll tell you sheet size, how it's mounted, suggested grout color, a number of different valuable tools um, to help you educate your customer. So I've gotten through one question. I have like eight of them, so uh, I'll keep going. Um, so what are modern Pebble alternatives? So we also, Pebbles, as you guys know, it's what we've been selling since 1997. It's what um, we developed our name in the, the tile industry with was our Pebble product. And now we've added some other materials that have the same Pebble appearance. So we now have glass tile that is in the Pebble shape. And the... Uh, we sell it in a matte finish, so that's an excellent choice for a shower floor. We also sell it in a gloss finish, which we only recommend our glass tile in the gloss finish for wall applications, but the matte finish test has a decoff that is very high, well above 0.42, and uh, is an excellent choice. And let me see if I can figure out how to get a picture up. Um, this is a little bit of a... Share a photo. Whoop. Me giving a shot here. Marketing is going to be very proud of me. There you go. So there's there's our pebble on um, our spin drift glass tile in matte finish on a shower floor. Let me accurately describe it. And uh, it, it looks amazing. And you can see that it looks like each piece was set individually. And there are, are no sheet lines. And it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful product. Let me see if I can show. I love this one. This is an amazing installation. They ran, um, they ran the, the spin drift glass tile up the wall in that little niche, as you can see. And I saw this photo um, when I first saw that. It looked like the glass actually had a round top to it because it's a, a glass top product and it's translucent. It has totally different dynamic in this type of application. And that um, it's just beautiful. So really well executed tile installation. Let me see if I can see any more 
Okay, let me see. Now the trick is to get back. Bam! <laughs> I'm kind of proud of that. That worked well. Marketing was like, it's easy. It's not easy for an old tile setter like myself. Um, but I'm figuring it out as we go. So that's, uh, that is, oh, and the other, I almost forgot to talk about Spindrift Marble. And watch this. Go right over there. There's our Spindrift Marble in Nebula, Tempest, and Carrara. Not Carrara, Carrara. And you can see that we have these three shapes. This is marble that we take and uh, cut into those shapes and then we mount it on a mesh and that can absolutely be used on a shower floor. It can be used in exterior applications and we've tested it for um, freeze thaw stability and it passed the test so we've specified in exterior applications and that is a, uh, it's, an, it's one as, as we refer to it as a modern pebble. Um, so that's our Spindrift marble. So looking forward to, we've been doing really well with those products. They're really popular, particularly the Carrara was the first one that we launched and we have trouble keeping it in stock. So that is, um, we really are looking forward to adding some new colors. There are a couple that we have in the, in the works that I'm excited um, to, to launch as well. So it's, an, it's something that's new and interesting and that's clearly your customers, that's what they're looking for. So 1042, we're doing good on time. For those of you who just joined us, um, my name is David Fatula, I'm with Island Stone and I'm the Director of Technical Services and we're talking about shower applications today. Do you recommend sealing pebbles and how often? So yes, generally speaking, it's a good idea to seal natural stone. I can't say that it should be sealed all the time, every time, because there are always, um, there are always applications where there may be a reason not to seal it. But generally speaking, sealing natural stone is a good idea. I'm not going to ignore that there's a lot of conversation in the tile industry right now about whether you should seal stone on a shower floor application due to the fact that some people believe that sealing stone um, retains moisture and therefore can darken light colored stone. So I, I'm going to defer to the installer in the field who's actively working with the sealers and with the, our product. And I'm always available to have a conversation about a particular application. If you're a tile setter and you're on with us today, I welcome those conversations. And I just don't ever like to draw a line in the sand and say, this is the way you should always do it. What I'm trying to provide is a general recommendation based on my years of experience in the tile industry, being in technical services for a number of years, and also conversations with active tile setters who are making their living installing tile every day. And a tip of my hat to those guys because you guys have a tough job. I've done it, and uh, it's a lot to manage out there, particularly in this market today um, with all the things you're dealing with. So thanks for being out there, continuing to set tile, and giving people beautiful installations. So back to, uh, back to my point is that generally speaking, it's a good idea to seal our pebble. Sealing natural stone prevents staining. And the argument can be made in a shower, um, do I need to seal a shower floor? Because there's not that many staining agents, but there can be shampoo, hair dye, um, and generally it improves the performance and durability of the natural stone if it's sealed because it absorbs less moisture. So the key is to then once you've sealed it with a high quality sealer, that's the other component. If you buy low grade inexpensive sealer, then that's what you're going to get, a low grade sealed installation. So I generally refer people to the, the top brands in the market, um, you know, the ones that have been around for a while. Laticrete um, owns the DuPont or Stone Tech, I apologize, DuPont Stone Tech is now owned by Laticrete, so Stone Tech, Ocean Care, Fila. Aquamix, um, those are some of the brands that, uh, that I recommend. You know, that's not all of them. I'm not going to go through all of them today, but generally speaking, you get what you pay for. So a $10 bottle of sealer is going to give you a $10 um, sealing job, where a, uh, a $60 bottle is going to give you a much better job. So then it needs to be um, properly maintained, and that means using a pH neutral tile and stone cleaner or a slightly alkaline cleaner. If you use acid to clean stone, sealed stone does not prevent acid damage. It will damage the stone. So I would say that, uh, like I said, 
pH neutral tile and stone cleaner or an all-purpose cleaner and degreaser. Um, everybody has an alkaline version if you have really heavy soap scum or buildup. That's going to protect the sealer. If you use bleach or acidic cleaners or ammonia-based cleaners, they are going to break down the sealer more quickly. So it's a good idea to use a, um, a pH neutral one or an alkaline one. And then resealing is going to be dictated by when it no longer appears to be holding out moisture as well or it starts to show any staining. You know, it depends on how often you use the, the surface and um, how often you clean it. Because generally speaking, it's not actually the sealer that's breaking down. It's that the surface is wearing slightly and it's wearing off that, that layer of sealer that's penetrated into the, the top of the stone. So um, that's, it's hard to tell you when to reseal it. If you want to do it every year, it's not going to hurt. Um, some people can go much longer, and it depends. If you have a shower wall application, um, you may need to seal it more regularly than outside the shower in a bathroom wall. So I'm just taking a look at the time, and uh, wow, it's a lot to keep. Everybody is scrolling to the bottom, and it ex is exciting to see. Hey, George, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, so how do you prepare a shower floor for tile installation? Wow, that is a, a long answer. Um, and there's a lot to cover there. We could do a whole hour on properly preparing a shower floor. Um, and there are many different techniques for doing it. There's proprietary systems that are basically polystyrene with waterproofing on top of it that incorporate with the drain. You know, Weedy makes one, Laticrete makes one, Schluter makes one. Um, and there's some people who are dedicated to foam, as they call it. And there are others that prefer the kind of old school method of a, a pre-slope to drain, which is a, a sand cement mixture that goes over a flat floor, and then uh, a waterproofing membrane, another layer of mortar bed, and then uh, the tile installation. And there are many different iterations of that as well. If you put a membrane on the top, if you don't, how it ties into the drain. So that's something I think that this time is going really fast today, and um, I only plan to be on for about 20 minutes. So. I'm going to leave that for another conversation, but there is a proper way to prepare a shower floor to evacuate the moisture effectively, and there's an improper way, and that's the key for me. If you've ever walked into a shower receptor and smelled that moldy, musty smell, that's usually a shower receptor that hasn't been properly prepared, and the shower receptor, what I'm talking about is the floor, and as it integrates to the wall as well. You can't see my hands, but going up the wall. So... That is something that I love to talk about that, um, and I'm free to, to discuss that at length if uh, you want to give me a call. Um, my telephone number, you ready? Got a pen? 760-994-5488. And that rings directly to me. It's my personal cell phone or my work cell phone, and um, I'm happy to, to discuss shower receptor installation at length. But the key is getting all of the, as much of the water out of your shower receptor. 95% runs across the top of the surface and then goes to the drain um, on the surface, and but some um, penetrates below the through the grout joint and in the setting bed below and is evacuated through um, through a second weep uh, a second set of weep holes. So let's talk about walls. Um, what can you use on walls? So basically, if you can use a tile um, on, yep, that's right, Jen. You got it right. No, whoops, that's 760-994-5488. Um, so basically, if you can use a tile on a shower floor, you can use it on a shower wall. The difference is, is there are some things that you can use on a shower wall only, and I've already brought up one example of that. Um, that would be uh, our gloss finish glass tile, for example. Not a good choice on a walking surface, whether that's a shower floor or outside the shower. One, it scratches a little bit more easily, and two, it, um, it's certainly more slippery. It does not meet that 0.42 requirement by a significant amount. Um, so I would not suggest that for a walking surface um, if there's going to be any water present. And it, it, like I said, it scratches a little bit more easily, so that's a, really a wall tile. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you this before I um, answer the next question, is that not the tile police. If you choose to do that in your own home, you're responsible for that decision. Commercial applications are a little bit different, but in a residential application, the homeowner makes the choice about what goes into their installations. That being said, what we're providing is a recommendation based on our over 20 years of experience, um, as well as our testing. 
So we do um, testing with the Tile Council of North America, and that qualifies certain tiles for certain applications, and it also disqualifies them as well. So marketing and sales would love to put everything everywhere, but for me, um, obviously, my job is to be a little bit of the wet blanket and say that's probably not a good idea to put it there. But once again, these are our recommendations. If you do it in your home, that's your choice. So um, there are people who do what they see fit in their application, um, and just, I would say, make an informed decision with the person who's selling you the tile and the person who's installing it. Um, so we also sell, you know, we sell pebble tile. We've talked about that. We sell glass tile. We've talked about that. We also have a very wide range of claddings and dimensional stone. And generally speaking, these go on um, interior and exterior wall applications. They're not for floors because they're obviously all different heights. Um, you can see some of them right there in the middle. Um, these are some of our many um, dimensional wall tiles and claddings. And some of these come unmounted and are sold in, as individual pieces, and some come mounted on the mesh. And but we get the question a lot, can I put this in a shower wall application? And the answer is, generally speaking, we would say no. Um, they are because they don't have grout or you don't use grout when you're installing them, for me that has a, is a hygiene issue. So you can have, as you're showering and whatever your, comes off your body can get stuck in the grout joints and it can cause organic growth, mold, um, because mold needs a food source. And it's just generally not a, a good practice because you have to be um, really diligent about your cleaning process. So um, this I will say is up to you. If you're gonna be really detailed in your cleaning, use the right cleaners, properly seal it. This is a good time there. Absolutely, I would suggest sealing. But you got to get in the grout joints. And um, in order to do that, you have to take some time and be pretty diligent in your cleaning process. Or you can grout it. And grouting is just a time-consuming, laborious process when you're grouting tile that's in relief, meaning you have tiles at two different heights. You have to fill that grout space and then cut it to the, pro the plane of the highest or lowest tile. And so you don't get a big grout joint ramp. So it could take as long to grout one of these applications, not as long, but almost as long as it did to install it. So those would be the two caveats. If you decide that you want to install it in a shower application, then probably a good idea to grout it, or your customer is going to have to be super diligent about cleaning because you can get stuck, stuff, stuck in the grout joint that you need to clean. Um, so I'm just going through a couple more questions and then I think we'll wrap it up. Um, maybe next week I'll plan to go for half an hour. If you guys want me to go for a little bit longer, I can. Um, you can certainly jump out as you see fit, but I love talking about tile. Um, I've been in the tile industry my entire life since I was in high school and started in the construction trade and moved from contracting, being a general contractor, to a, a tile installer. And so I could talk tile all day long. It's what I like to do. Um, so yes, there is a difference between how you install glass versus pebble. Um, the primary thing to consider is that with uh, run, forest, run, I'm trying, I'm running as fast as I can, um, is when you install glass tile, even though our glass tile has a, a back pane on it, so you can't see straight through it, so the color of the thin set isn't going to have the same impact if it was entirely translucent. You can see through at the side of the through the side of the tile, and so it's important to uh, have your trowel techniques to be needs to be really good. You need to um, flatten your trowel marks when you're installing. Generally speaking, um, glass tile puts a little bit more demand on the substrate preparation and the uh, the installation. So you'll probably want to you know use a, a higher quality thin set. Um, generally speaking, because it's glass tile is a little bit harder to bond to, and it's not as flexible. So um, we can get into that in another Instagram live when we talk about the real nuances of uh, substrate prep for glass tile versus stone. Um, but yes, I would say that it is different, and it's just uh, glass tile, generally speaking, is not as forgiving as stone. It doesn't flex as well, um, and it... Uh, it's going to put some more demands on the tile assembly, and movement joints are also important. Um, movement joints. Phone call. <laughs> Someone's calling me on my phone number already. Um, so that uh, that's the that's my in answer on that one. Um, I'm just going to see. Uh, 
steam showers and steam rooms, that's a good question. Um, generally speaking, the substrate prep for a steam shower or steam room is different than for a regular shower because of the, pen, the presence of so much steam. Often residential jobs are um, a little bit different than commercial jobs. They're not used as regularly as a, as a total steam shower. Um, but that being said, there's, a, there's an industry standard um, in the TCNA handbook for how to properly prepare a shower receptor or a, uh, a steam shower or a steam room. And our stones can be used in those applications and assuming everything is done properly. Everything that, all my recommendations come with the caveat that assuming the substrate is prepared properly and that it's installed per our recommendations and the industry recommendations, then yes, you can use our pebble in steam showers or steam rooms. So here's my last question for today, and I'm going to wrap it up. Um, how do I keep my tile looking good? So uh, we already talked about it a little bit, so we can go through this pretty quickly. Um, thank you, Razor Wire Design. I'm doing my best. Appreciate you being here. Um, is to seal it properly. Um, and once again, generally speaking, it's a good idea to seal natural stone. You don't need to seal glass tile. It's impervious. It's not going to absorb stains. Um, and then to maintain it properly, and this is the key is that you need to use a pH neutral tile and stone cleaner or an all-purpose cleaner and degreaser because ammonia-based cleaners, bleach-based cleaners, and acidic cleaners will break down both the stone and the sealer over time. So the acidic cleaners will break down the stone, ammonia or bleach-based cleaners start to break down the sealer very quickly. So it's a good idea to use a, a high quality cleaner and your, your tile installer is the best resource um, when it comes to these things or your showroom depending. Um, they both are excellent resources for this type of information. They've been selling and installing tile for years and they can give you a, a good recommendation. Many showrooms actually sell a line of sealers and cleaners so they can uh, provide that information. But so I tell my customers when I was installing and still do a little side work here and there um, is the, the key is to I'll do a good job sealing it and then you do a good job maintaining it and I probably won't ever have to come back and seal it again. Um, generally my customers will seal it on their own. So God, time flies when I'm talking. 1058. Um, I appreciate everybody being here today. This is fun for me. I, I look forward to doing it next week at 1030 Pacific time on the Island Stone Instagram channel. Today I'm going to remember to save it. Last week I didn't save it. Marketing chastised me for that. Um, and I will do a better job ending it this week. Last week I just couldn't get off fast enough. Um, so thank everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate it. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, you can email me at david.fatula, F like in Frank, A-T-U-L-A, at islandstone.com. Or you can call me, once again, 760-994-5488. And uh, we have some um, ambiente tile. You can come back next week. It's good to see you. Um, we will, uh, we'll be back here next week um, at 1030 Pacific time. And we'll do it all again. And I got some cool stuff planned. A little swag exchange possibly. And uh, that's about it for me. And I need to come up with a good tagline. Because every, every Instagram live, every YouTube has a good tagline. So um, if you can think of a, a good tagline, let me know. Because I'll be open to those. Um, so everybody stay safe. And uh, thank you for being here. And we will talk next week.